Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for me to bring you episode number 6 of our Wigan Athletic Road to Glory career mode here on FIFA 16. I've really been enjoying uh, doing this series so far and you guys seem to be enjoying it as well, so thank you guys uh, for that. Nevertheless, of course, we're going to be going through another 5 games today, 3 will be simmed but 2 will be played. You can see in the background there the calendar uh, featuring a game against Liverpool. We played Manchester United and beat them after extra time in the third round of the Capital One Cup and it doesn't get much more, uh, it doesn't get much easier into the into the fourth round of the Capital One Cup because now we've got Liverpool so we're going to have to pull off yet another upset if we want to progress in uh, in the Capital One Cup yet again. In the background though you are seeing another squad report, we're into a new, well we're not into a new month but we've crossed over into a new month since I last showed it you and uh, there's a few players that have gone up actually, James Bree, Marcus Rashford uh, has as well to 60 overall. Uh, I think David Perkins has as well for some reason to like 68. Morsey to 69. Um, so there's a decent amount of growth across the entire squad. You've seen Doolan and Kapuska grow through uh, training, but uh, Tim Chow up one, Cole Clough up one as well. And we do have quite a few young players in the squad, and they are growing pretty damn well. A few older players, of course, as well, but even a few of them are growing as well. Craig Morgan, there you can see, is up by one. To 68, and I think you can. I think there was a squad report last episode, so you can sort of compare uh, the uh, the squad report from this episode to last episode. And I think the main men that have gone up are Sam Morsey, uh, Will Grigg is 67 now, and uh, then Perkins and also Rashford as well. But unfortunately, one player who isn't uh, growing and isn't very happy at the moment is Lee Nichols, our backup goalkeeper. Despite having played a few games, isn't happy at the club and has already handed a transfer request. And it's only October, so Lee Nichols really making his thoughts known uh, very early on. Nevertheless, in terms of a vote from last episode, you guys decided that I shouldn't take the Wales national team offer, but it was, it was very, very close, it has to be said. But overall, uh, not taking that offer did win. I will deliberate though for now because it was so close. But I think the fact that you can't scout youth players in Wales is a little bit, you know, that's one thing that may prevent me from uh, taking that job. Nevertheless, moving into the first game of today's episode, and it's played and away from home against Scunthorpe. One change, no, sorry, two changes actually, or main changes to the team. And that's that James Bree comes in at right back and also Rashford up front. We get the first chance of the game and Max Power hits the post after just three and a half minutes. Scunthorpe really slow out of the traps and not waking up at all and we're through again. Sam Morsey forcing a good save out of Daniels. It was straight at the Scunthorpe goalkeeper really though. But still after 11 minutes we're going forward again. Scunthorpe have been just not at the races at all in this first 10 minutes and Bartosz Kapuska has been brought down by a Scunthorpe defender who will promptly get a yellow card after the Polish uh, midfielder's very good dribbling. Mikel Dulin will step up and take the resultant free kick. It's hit the post there. It's fallen back to Kapuska who won the free kick in the first place and he manages to turn and put the ball into the back of the net. I think it may have actually deflected on the way through. It's a very scrappy goal in the end. The goalkeeper can't quite hook it off the line. As you can see, Kapuska turns and it just comes off the studs of a Scunthorpe defender, which uh, allows it to trickle through into the bottom corner. Now all the way into the second half and Rashford with some wonderful control, bringing the ball down on the half volley, forcing a wonderful save out of the Scunthorpe defender after Kapuska's lovely ball over the top. But Scunthorpe only just getting back into this game after 70 minutes. We should have put this game to bed by now, but Scunthorpe are now trying to go forward down this right-hand side, putting two crosses into the box in quick succession, and Hopper coming very close to scoring there. It just brushes past Jasko Lyons' post. Up the other end, though, James Brees found Will Grigg down the right-hand side. He finds Vucic off the bench, and what a save that is from the Scunthorpe defender somehow. Keeping it at 1-0, Scunthorpe now really putting us under pressure, but a corner has been cleared away, and only as far as Will Grigg, who's come off the bench to replace Marcus Rashford, of course. This is the first game he hasn't started, and his fresh legs are getting away from the Scunthorpe defence. He sees Mikel Doolan in the centre, who's one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, and Mikel Doolan scores to put the game beyond any doubt whatsoever. It is now 2-0. And Mikel Doolan, the Danish winger that we signed from Midtjylland, set up by Will Grigg. A wonderful run from his own half all the way basically to the edge of the area, then slots it across for Doolan, who still has some work to do. It's not exactly a tap in, and it's a wonderful finish into the top right corner. The celebrations were mad at the time. We've won the game. I do apologise for the fact that my Elgato decided to record at like 15 frames per second towards the end of that game as well. I don't know what happened, but it didn't stop Mikel Duland from getting man of the match. Good ratings as well for Kapuska and Will Grigg, who of course came off the bench. Rashford starting that game for the first time, uh, well, certainly in a played game anyway. And he did pretty well, he did pretty well, but obviously Will Grigg setting up the second goal in the end. Meanwhile, in the background in training, Mikel Duland has gone up to a 70 overall. He was 69. 
Uh, before this episode, Nat training session where he went up on his long passing, crossing, finishing and shot power has meant that he is now 70. Philip Volden has gone up to a 54 as well. So uh, the youth player from Sweden, who's got 80 to 94 potential, looks a very good young player, um, is, um, is doing very well in training as well. I'll show you a, a proper report of, uh, of the youth players that we've got in the youth academy a little bit later on. But now it's time to get into the second game of today's episode, and it's a sim at home against Doncaster in the league, the second league game, of course, of today's episode. A few changes, Barnett into the side to replace James Bree, John Sutar in for Morsey, Perkins in for Kapustka, and Grigg is back into the side to replace Rashford. But after the first half, we're actually down 1-0 to a Danny and Gesson goal for Doncaster after just 20 minutes. So at home, against the team in the mid-table, we are actually losing, but thankfully Will Grigg from the penalty spot is able to equalize after the set in the 74th minute and we do hold on to the win but as you can see in the latest score section Peterborough who are second won 2-0 against Swindon so they've managed to chop our lead down from 5-3 to three after that draw against Doncaster which is slightly disappointing but there are a few younger players playing that one or well um, players that weren't quite first team players if you like you know Kapuska wasn't playing etc but now it is time to get into the third game of today's episode against Fleetwood Town who are coming off the back of a very bad loss against Coventry City. They lost 4-1 in their last game to Coventry, who I think are in the playoffs at the moment. They've got a good run of form together, and they've managed to thrash Fleetwood in the game before now, so they'll be low on confidence with Fleetwood Town, but we've got to try and do the job and beat them nevertheless anyway. Uh, Cameron Balthwick jackson is back in the side after his long-term, in or fairly long-term injury, and Kapuska is back in as well with Vilchuk, Grigg, and Doolan still up front, but after the first half, it is still goal, it's still nil-nil. Obviously, Fleetwood Town, the main man they've got there is Shona Amyobi up front. You may recognise him uh, from Newcastle, of course. But now into the last 10 minutes, and we're still drawing nil-nil. But thankfully, Will Grigg is there to save the day again. He got us the equaliser and one point against Doncaster. Today, though, he gets us all three against Fleetwood in the following game in the league. And as you can see, Will Grigg has been absolutely bossing it. 12 goals already this season. I think we've only played like 12 games or 13 games. 12 goals in the league. Of course, he scored four in the Capital One Cup against Southend as well. So he's on absolute fire going into this next Capital One Cup game against Liverpool. He's going to need to be on his top game against Liverpool. Obviously, a big team in the Barclays Premier League. This is going to be just as challenging as the Manchester United game was in the third round. Liverpool, who are doing okay themselves in the Barclays Premier League, and uh, this is going to be a challenge. They've, they, as you can see, they've got uh, the majority of their squad is their main starting eleven. So we're going to have issues here, let's be honest. We're going to have to play our A game. But as you can see, we're not really playing our A team. Sutar, Jacobs, Colclough, Vucic, Andy Kellett all into the side. Kellett and Colclough for their first starts for the club since the start of this series. Uh, so a few players, a few main players out of the team, the likes of Morsey, and a few more, because we've got to prioritise on the league at the end of the day. This is only the Capital One Cup, but as you can see, one man who was coming into the side, John Sutar, has been injured after just eight minutes, and he's going to have to be replaced by Tim Chow off the bench. The 65 overall Tim Chow coming off the bench uh, after just eight minutes to replace the injured John Sutar. Hopefully it's not too bad for him. Obviously, we only just signed him from Hearts. Nevertheless, uh, Liverpool were going forward there with Adam Lallana, and it was a deep, very, well, a very good save from UC Askelainen, but Liverpool going forward again. Ryan Colclough has brought down Jordan Ibe, and he's been given a red card, I think, as a reaction, really, that challenge to the poor challenge from the Liverpool player that injured John Sutar that went unpunished, and as you can see, uh, usually it doesn't look too bad, but you can see he's really scissored into Jordan Ibe's standing leg. It is a very dangerous challenge, and one probably caused by the, by the injury to John Sutar. There you can see the change in formation that we've had to go for as well. Now got two strikers, we've had to bring both our wingers back and Michael Jacobs is now having to play out on the wing and Kapuska up front. So a massive change uh, in terms of formation. It didn't hurt us too much at first, but as you can see, Felipe, Felipe Coutinho has come off the bench for Liverpool and did put the ball in the back of the net, but he was absolutely miles offside. No real issues there for the linesman in terms of calling that one. Five minutes to go of normal time, though. As you can see, Will Grigg winning their header, but it's cleared off the line by Nathaniel Klein. We're going forward again, despite being down to 10 men for the majority of this game. Tim Chow finding Oda Lucy off the bench. Wonderful first-time ball into the box there for Marcus Rashford, who's come off the bench for uh, Bartos Kapu 
Buska. And uh, unfortunately, it was saved by Adam Bogdan, which means for the third time in a row, a Capital One Cup tie is going to extra time. Odalusi swinging the ball in for Michael Jacobs, who wins the header, but puts it over the bar. Jacobs down this right-hand side has been doing fantastically to say he's a central midfielder, and he's doing well again. That fantastic touch to get away from Jordan Ives, sprinting into the area. He's got two men in support. He finds Will Grigg, and Will Grigg scores. Would you believe it? This guy again. Will Grigg, our number nine, Will Grigg goes big yet again he's just clinical did you have any doubt whatsoever once you saw he was one of the men in the box and that is a ball that's bobbling as well that's a hard one to control and pinpoint into the into the back of the net like that but tim chow with a fantastic turn trying to set up a second rashford bring the ball down uh, behind him then turning lucas labor who gets far too tight to him. he runs into the box and there the finesse strike saved by Adam Bogdan. Wonderful work from Tim Chow and Marcus Rashford trying to get our second. Liverpool though trying to get an equaliser in the 120th minute. Swinging a corner in but it's saved and caught by UC Askelainen. Adam Bogdan was actually forward out of the other, out of the other net. Uh, and UC Askelainen pumps it upfield and that is the end of the game. Yet another giant killing for the second round in a, in a row. We beat United in round three and now we beat Liverpool in round four. UC Askelainen with man of the match. Great ratings as well for Jacobs on that right hand side. Will Grigg and Odell Lucy, who came off the bench, Tim Chow as well. Odell Lucy did very, very well. I have to say, I might play him a bit more in future off the bench. He was very good. And Michael Jacobs, shout out to him. As an attacking midfielder, he did very well out on that right hand side. And of course, set up the winning goal for Will Grigg to score. In worse news, however, John Sutar is out for quite some time with a dislocated shoulder. So he's going to be out for a while. And nevertheless, in the background, though, we're now sending out our youth scouts to different countries after that win. I think one goes to Germany and the other one definitely goes to Austria. Nevertheless, now we're going to look at the players that we've got in the squad already. Dino Zetterberger, 50 overall goalkeeper. Philip Bolden, he's the man to watch out for. The best youth academy player that we've got at the moment. Martin Bowman and Par Hallingstrom there as well. Then Thomas Segberg, who is a striker, 43 overall. Decent potential, though he's got the worst potential in the, in the youth squad at the moment. And then Tobias Ekblom, who is a left back. Worse overall, but got, has got a pretty decent potential. So those are the... I don't even know how many were there. Was it about six or seven players in the youth academy at the moment? But nevertheless, we're now getting into the final game of today's episode against Port Vale. And one man who's been slightly under the radar in played games so far is Mikel Dooland. But he's been fantastic in sim games. So in this home game in the league, once again against Port Vale, we'll be looking for him to do a job. We're wanting to win this game. This should be a game that we win fairly easily. And as you can see, Mikel Dooland has already done the job after 14 minutes to give us the lead. And he scored again after the 31st minute. So he's got yet another brace in a sim. Well played, this guy. I mean, he's on a hat-trick now. We'll have to see whether he can do that. He hasn't got one yet, but he hasn't just got a hat-trick. He scored a flipping fourth. In the 65th minute, he completes his hat-trick, and just two minutes later, he scores a fourth. We beat Port Vale 4-0 in the league, and all four goals are scored by our left midfielder, Mikel Doolan. You just couldn't make it up. This kid is absolutely incredible in Sims, and obviously we saw him do a heck of a lot more against Scunthorpe as well. He was fantastic against Scunthorpe, and now maybe this is finally Mikel Doolan living up to his potential in play games and in sims as well. So fantastic stuff from Mikel Dooland. He's being trained as well in the background. He's rewarded uh, for that four goal haul with some training along with Philip Volden, the youth academy player from Sweden, and also Will Grigg, who we're gonna try and get to 68 overall. In the background though, you can see the table for now. And uh, we are actually six points clear already of Peterborough United. Then it's South End United, Millwall, Colchester, and Coventry. Uh, finishing off the playoff positions, uh, or the top six even, but we are six points clear of second place. So a very, very good start to the league campaign already after just 15 games. That 4-0 win over Port Vale, though, with all four goals being scored by Mikel Dooland. The win against Liverpool in the Capital One Cup. The win away against Scunthorpe, in which we saw Doolan score as well, and Kapuska, both our new signings. This series is going absolutely fantastically. Really enjoying recording it. If you're really enjoying watching it, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe if you are new around here as well, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. What an episode. This has been another bumper-packed episode. Next episode will be exactly the same. Hopefully, I can bring that to you in about three or four days' time. Hopefully, three. Nevertheless, it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day. Enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. No, that's not me. Act like a waste man, that's not me.